Hey guys, Dov here with another double cast for you. Today we've got Eltharian taking on Grom the Paunch in our first replay. This was actually recorded a while back when the replay system was not functioning, so I actually live recorded myself versus Turin. And then for the second game, we'll be having a look at uh, Skarsnik versus New Techlist with his fancy mounts, so stay tuned for that. All right, and here we are with the first game, Grom the Paunch, going to be going up against Eltharian for the DLC here. Started it a little bit late, so we're already kind of getting going here, but for my build, you can see we've got Grom there, the Swamp Things, Regiment of Renown Trolls, uh, yeah, River river Trolls, we've got four Goblins, eight Peak Loons, uh, Troll Hag, the Biggin, Regiment of Renown, uh, Rogue Idol, and some Wolf Riders, the Regiment of Renown Wolf Riders, Moon Howlers, two Pump Wagons, and yeah, the Wolf Rider Archers for Turin's build there. He's got uh, the Regiment of Renown Archers with Light Armor with their flammable effect. One unit of Sisters of Averlorn. He's got uh, an Arcane Phoenix as well. Eltharian. One unit of White Lion Chariots. Rangers and Spearmen up front. I believe those are Spearmen. Might be some Silver and Guard mixed in. And then I believe those are just Silver Helms uh, for Cavalry. So pretty good stuff. Uh, yeah, uh, right off the bat, you can see I'm throwing some rocks at those Regiment of Renown Archers. Honestly, the... Uh, <laughs> Sisters of Avalorn would have been a good target, but you can see just that one volley there did so much damage to Grom. I'm going to pop his damage resistance and go ahead and pull back to my own lines there, not try and get absolutely roasted by all the fire units on the field. Uh, meanwhile, Turin just kind of patiently approaching here. We're going to go ahead and give a charge order for the Gobbos across the line. Gobbos will be able to get pretty cost-effective engagements on some Spearmen there. It looks like just Illyrian Reavers going to get absolutely crumped on. We move in with uh, Grom. We move in with the... Uh, the Hag there as well. The Lion Chariots get a good charge in the front line, but we're going to follow up with the Moon Howlers, try and keep them pressured. But yeah, man, those those uh, Lyrian Reavers get absolutely crumped, and those, the Pump Wagons are going to move up and start to do a lot of damage against these infantry. Throw down a Soul Blight right there, uh, just to debuff the armor. And uh, here, I really should be... You can see how not all of my Wolf Riders are firing. I really should pull them up and start to unload on Eltharian himself. While his armor is debuffed by that Soul Blight in particular, um, I'm also a little bit late on stacking the Soul Blight. You can see just now applying that they need stab in to Eltharian. And I was about to charge Grom straight into Eltharian right there. Honestly, I probably should have, but uh, we're going to pop the Wah now. Uh, the big boss will do a little bit of damage to Eltharian. And uh, yeah, again, I probably should have had the Wolf Rider Archers right there to shoot Eltharian while his armor was debuffed. We could have got some really cost-effective damage done. But that being said, uh, the Swamp Things, everyone else going to try and keep Eltharian on the ground, see if we can't finish him off. Unfortunately, he is going to be able to get back up in the air there. The Pump Wagons had done some pretty good anti-infantry damage, but uh, yeah, right now, I really need to pu push back and disrupt those archers. They've both unloaded a ton of ammunition, and you can see Grom's just getting absolutely pounded by all the fire damage of the High Elves there uh, with the extra flammable effect and everything. Going to go ahead and overcast that Spirit Leech. Try and get uh, get Altharian off the field. Of course, he does have his own trickle heal with Apotheosis. So as long as Turin stays, you know, safe with him and active, then he won't uh, get taken down. But certainly we've been able to do a lot of damage to him. And the big boss gets a little bit singled out there, unfortunately. He gets a little bit caught out of position, but also doing some good damage to Altharian actually kind of pushes Altharian back a little bit there. But unfortunately, I don't uh, <clears throat> I don't get this goblin back to safety. Instead, I'm going to actually... Yeah, oh, no, there we go. Try and bring him back. There we go. Yeah, get back to a safe position and get back near the uh, the hag, who's been able to regenerate some HP. Unfortunately, Grom is not doing great. I've just got him kind of hanging back at the moment. But you can see, um, yeah, Turin's archers and uh, Sisters of Avalorn are focusing on him. He's just continuously taking fire. I really should pull him back out of range right now. But, uh, yeah, you can see he actually gets routed there, and I think that's the end for Grom. A quick miss micro for me, and he gets absolutely shredded. I might come back if he manages to get away there, but balance power is still very close, if not just slightly in my favor because of all the damage that Altharian's taken. Likewise, those White Lion Chariots, uh, I think they're down a model, taking quite a bit of HP damage, and the, uh, the Pump Wagons. Here, though, again, Turin <clears throat> just switches his focus fire, and just look at that. Just two units of uh, Skirmishers can do so much damage when combined with each other, those sisters of Averlorn and the uh, the Wardens, or the, uh, whatever, Talons, that's right, Talons of Torquilada. Tharian the Grim, likewise, is able to route away some of the Pump Wagons, which I really needed to get back there and start to <clears throat> pressure those archers sooner, but just couldn't quite get get it done. Uh, the Rogue Idol's still alive, but it really hasn't done much, to be honest. Like, it's gotten some okay damage done against some various units, but uh, really I'm very underwhelmed by the missile attack of the Rogue Idol. I think it's very, very poor for the cost. 
Like, it's just significantly worse than the Saigor in every way in terms of it, the ranged attack for the Regiment of Renown. Uh, the missile, uh, it does technically the same damage on paper, but because the, the projectile itself is much, much smaller, it impacts way less units, and as a result just does way less damage. Likewise, you'll see later in, a, in another replay, actually it might have been already published by now, I'm not sure, um, <laughs> where I was trying to throw rocks at Imric and it just wasn't was not working, so really I have to say I'm not impressed at all by the Rogue Idol. Um, I don't think, I mean, considering that Greenskins are incentivized to play wide now anyway because of the way that WoW works, like I really think that it's going to be a liability more than an asset in most builds because it's so expensive and slow. And at least with something like the Arachnorok Queen, um, you can summon more units and it's also very mobile, has poison, anti-large, and it even costs less. Uh, it doesn't have as much armor and HP, obviously, but the mobility, the poison, and the summons are really way more powerful, I think, than the ranged attack. Uh, maybe if they inc increase the projectile size of the Biggin's ranged attack, that would actually help quite a bit. But here, you can see the white lines charge in. At this point, I'm just trying to keep my Wolf Rider archers safe, basically, and just try and only get counter charges with them when I can. But uh, Turin's doing exactly what he should, which is also something that's easy to do, and just avoiding the idol. I can't necessarily stack all of my Wolf Riders just on top of the idol, so... He can only be in one place at one time, and uh, unfortunately, if your opponent just largely ignores them, tries to avoid them, um, yeah, <laughs> not a lot you can do about it, unfortunately. I was definitely missing the Fermented Fungi as well. I think Grom's good, but I definitely think in matchups where you're going to be facing a powerful Flying Lord, Skarsnik is just so strong. He's cheap, and that, uh, that Fermented Fungi can pin Lords on the ground, right? So, yeah. Uh, Grom definitely a good showing here, and I think if I had microed him a little bit better, like, honestly, I had a pretty good advantage at the beginning there, and I do think this build could have won, um, if I, if I had maybe played a little bit better, especially with the, kind of the stacking debuffs, if I had gotten Soul Blight and They Need Stab and properly stacked on top of each other at the same time, and got those Wolf Riders into a position to unload on Altharian, I think we might have been able to finish him off there, it's definitely tough to say. Uh, likewise, just pushing up with the pump wagons, but I mean, if you think about this build, if I were to just cut the big in for, um, like, just even bring the Arachnorok Queen instead, that would free up a little bit of points, could maybe bra grab, like, one extra pump wagon, and in addition, the spiders, of course, um, you know, pressuring the back line could keep the pressure on those skirmishers and uh, not just let whatever get roasted. Likewise, Skarsnik, I think... You know, Skarsnik and Grom are both very tanky in sort of different ways. Grom's, if you micro him well, he's tanky, but it does require more micro, certainly. Skarsnik is a little bit simpler, and he's also a little bit cheaper as well. Um, his support abilities are arguably better. I mean, there's kind of an argument to be made there, but I certainly am a big fan of, uh, of Skarsnik, so yeah. Um, that's it for this replay. I actually do have one more replay to show you. Um, so the Rogue Idol... I think it's it's an awesome unit, super fun. I love the art of it as it's currently implemented, though. I think it's kind of the Dread Saurian problem. Like, its animations seem to be, be a little bit buggy. Its mass seems to be a little bit buggy. And it's just so slow and expensive for what you get. Um, so, yeah, let's talk about instead in the next replay what I think is the best unit in this DLC. All right, next up we've got Skarsnik there in the distance, this nasty troll hag here in the front. We're going to be going up against HDS. Uh, so these battles are from my stream a few days ago. I actually was not super happy with the product. Um, I was just not in a great frame of mind that day, so I actually edited the stream to cut out the multiplayer part because I just ended up getting super salty and it just wasn't very good. So uh, apologies about that, guys. Uh, I'm going to cast these games separately, though, at least the ones that were good, and kind of give you some analysis um, yeah, in this in this game, though, what I wanted to talk about specifically is the pump wagons. You saw in the game against Turin that the pump wagons were very much the bright spot. So we've got four of those pump wagons here, only 450 points. They will be very, very cost effective, these good old Snotling pump wagons. We'll get in close, take a quick look. For those of you guys who didn't see um, the stream, yeah, definitely go watch the first part where I do some unit analysis. That part definitely is very, very good. Um, but for the rest, we've got a full 20 stack here, Skarsnik. A uh, relatively cheap support lord. We've also got the goblin big boss, uh, wolf riders to help chase routing units, goblins up front with the eight peak loons. Very much a goblin focused build, just with the uh, one troll hag here and the big spider, of course. Uh, Teclas going to throw down a fiery convocation. He, of course, coming in on his brand new arcane phoenix mount. Makes him very expensive, but very powerful. 
So we're going to be looking for some Kindle Flame synergy with the new uh, Regiment of Renown Archers here, the Talons of Tor Kaleda. Got some Silverin Guard uh, protecting the back, Signs of Mathline and Rangers up front. Here, the uh, Fireborn going to catch a Spirit Leech. And we've also got some War Lions coming over here. The Spider's going to move up on them. And uh, poor Aslan boys going to feel the wrath of the Spider. Definitely be rough for them. But I make a horrible mistake here. I accidentally give an attack order for this, uh, this poor... This poor hag, she's about to feel all of the pain as she gets uh, probably enfeebling foed by Teclis. No, just attacked by Teclis and the Fireborn is enough um, it to absolutely wreck her face and she gets instantly killed. I think that might be the fastest I've ever seen any hero die. <laughs> so that's not great. A cast her down right off the bat, but we do have the... Uh, we managed to get the Mither off to kind of slow down Teclis, control him a little bit. We did terrify away the spiders as well and the focus of this replay... The Snotlings just came in and face-charged these rangers with a bunch of goblins, and these poor rangers really had uh, nothing going for them. <laughs> the pump wagon's absolutely pumping. I guess they're actually, like, throwing those little spores, huh? That's hilarious. We'll get in close and kind of watch the animation as these boys roll through. We're going to pop a wah as well. We've got the Silver and Guard and these uh, Scions of Mathalan as well. We're going to try and push back and get onto those archers in the second line. The Doom Divers just continuously pressuring Teclis. And Scarsnake and the Spider moving up. We again overextend a little bit here. A nice net from Teclis and going to punish me for that. And the Goblin Big Boss, just like the Troll Hag, is going to feel all of the pain here with the Kindle Flame from that net. The Fireborn and Teclis coming in. He's also got, uh, yeah, just just that. We did manage to get the Fermented Fungi and they need stabbing off both on Teclis. But unfortunately, he's protected by his Fireborn here. He pops a Potion of Troy. He's going to pop back up in the air. And, uh, yeah, the Spider and Teclis are here. The Snotling Pump Wagons actually push up as well. And uh, they're kind of like flares in the way that they do armor-piercing damage. They don't have the best attack, but with their charge bonus active, uh, they can actually get in here and get some decent work done against uh, even, like, armored cavalry like the Fireborn just because of the nature of the unit. But, yeah, rolling them around in kind of this big mass has definitely been very helpful. The Silver and Guard, though, do have good bonus versus large and AP values when compared to a regular High Elf Spears, so they'll do great at taking down those Pump Wagons if they can get attacks on them. Looks like they're going to pull away there. I don't know where their helmets are at, but anyway, up here, Scarsnick and the Spider get into a pitched engagement. The, the same thing almost happens to the big spider here that happened to the Troll Hag. You'd think I, I would learn after two times, but nope. Troll Hag and the uh, big boss weren't enough to learn. I do manage to barely extricate the Spider, though, because, of course, you know what's here to mass block? Oh, look at that! There's the 450 point Snotling Pump Wagons that have, you know, a ton of mass and can block these knights and block Teclis from, uh, you know, keeping the spider here. So, again, those Pump Wagons coming in, so starting to get terrified off, but considering how cheap they are and how much damage they've been able to do, I'm very happy with their performance. We take kind of an overarching look here, you can see the uh, Wolf Riders now being deployed to chase routing units, get on some archers as well. Continue to keep the pressure. AP Gloons doing a great job against these Silver and Guard. I probably didn't catch their Fanatics cast, but I do believe I got one at least. Yeah, Pump Wagons continuing to push through. These are the Talons, right? No? I think these are just regular, yeah, regular archers. Nice flock of Doom from Teclis. Going to do some decent damage, but again, the low model count of the Pump Wagons means they won't take much damage at all. And uh, Teclis is going to now get the Fermented Fungi on him. That beautiful animation popping off, and that pops him immediately into an Enrage. Means he can't pop his potion. He can't get back up into the air. He's going to be stuck on the ground with Scarsnick here, and the Queen, and the Pump Wagons, and everything. So, definitely a great situation for me. Bounce of power pretty decisively in my favor, but... At this point, the, uh, the elves just getting absolutely swarmed by greenskins. And I've said this in a few videos, and I'll, I think it's very much true. Um, the greenskins are incentivized to play super wide now, right? Because of the way wa the wah mechanic works. And just in general, you have a lot of really, really cost-effective low- and mid-tier troops. Um, you can absolutely flood the board and swarm. And it, it doesn't require that much micro, because, to be honest, you only have a few really expensive units that matter. Like, in this build, the spider, obviously. Like, the Doom Diver is relatively important. Like, I want to keep my Skirmish Cav Force alive. Obviously, keeping Scarsnick alive for leadership purposes is important as well, but he's honestly not that expensive. Uh, same thing with the Big Boss and the Troll Hag. Like, yeah, losing them sucks. <laughs> uh, F's in the chat for the Troll Hag, because she got all of the fire to the face. Probably what she deserves, to be honest, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, but really, it's just the Spider and then playing with a full stack. I honestly think, like, 
16, 17 stacks are mandatory, up to 20 stacks um, for like all green skins build going forward. I, I Maybe not all, I'm sure you could definitely get away with using some more monster focus builds like I used to do, but I definitely think going wide um, with a lot of kind of low to mid tier units with maybe a few elites is the way to go for the green skins. We'll have to see. I'm, I mean, they just have such a flexible roster now. I mean, they did before even, but the Snotling Pump Wagons add a really nice, cheap, anti-infantry uh, armor-piercing option. And I really do think, out of all the units in this DLC, the Snotling Pump Wagons are the best. I mean, they're so cheap for what they give you. The basic ones especially, but even the Flappas. I mean, the Flappas are only 650. They're actually really, really effective. High charge, um, you know, great damage. Uh, just in general, I think the Pump Wagons are, are the winners here. The Spiky Rollers are not as cost-effective. Spore Splodas, I mean, they're kind of fun. And different, but uh, yeah, the regular pump wagons, uh, especially massing four of them like this, it's relatively cheap. I mean, this is, yeah, it's like close to 2,000 points, I guess, for all of this anti-infantry, but considering it's all way spread out, you can travel around in a big mass, and you can use it for other things as well. Again, I've had some success, you saw both in this replay and last replay, kind of using them to mass block and attack cavalry, with support, obviously, you don't want them soloing cavalry, but especially with infantry support, um, can take on a lot of targets, honestly. Like, one pump wagon stacked on top of one gobbo is pretty dangerous. And, I mean, that's like a, what, seven seven fifty spend in total? Which is a, basically a mid-tier infantry unit. So it's actually really, really good, uh, to be honest. Uh, for the High Elves, I'm a big fan of the White Lions, or the War Lions, rather. I do, uh, I, maybe not a big fan. I think it needs to, I need to get good with them. I think the potential is there, because they're so fast. And because they have low model count with high HP, uh, you know, all things considered, their, their low melee defense and low armor is a bit of a problem. But with the right spell loadout, so I think especially with, like, you know, high magic potentially giving Shield of Safri and that nice trickle heal from Apotheosis. Obviously, uh, maybe an Alariel build as well. You could go super wide with Alariel and just try and heal them, maybe give Faz protection. That would actually be quite strong. But I think in general, the War Lions are going to be a nice uh, kind of fast attack unit. Very high micro and relatively squishy, kind of glass cannon, but... Do think they'll be very good if you get them in the right situation. Uh, for the high elves in general, though, they're still going to run into the problem of just not being able to go quite wide enough. Uh, it's trying to show off some of the new units here. I think the silver and guard are actually kind of okay. I, I was not very high on them at first, but I think they're actually not a, a bad unit. I do want to kind of do some more testing, but again, the issue for the high elves is just often having enough units on the field, right? And the green skins, on the other hand, have kind of the opposite. Uh, not problem, but <laughs> it's certainly not a problem for them. It can be a little bit tricky to micro a lot of units, but yeah. As I mentioned earlier, with the new wall implementation, you're incentivized to play very wide green skins builds. So I think most good green skins builds are going to be at least 16 units or more. Um, just because you really want to be taking advantage of that high model count. Likewise, your, your buffs synergize very well with kind of these uh, cost-effective low to mid-tier troops. And you have just so many, right? Like Orc Air Boys, super cost-effective mid-tier bowmen. You've got decent mid-tier infantry, especially with the uh, Fanatics. Again, very micro-intensive, but the Fanatics can be absolutely devastating. Um, the, uh, you know, lots of great mid-tier cavalry. <clears throat> great, cheap skirmish cab. Cheapest skirmish cab in the game, and also very potent. And, uh, yeah, these big monsters, again, just for 400 points difference. I mean, the Rogue Idol, it's, it looks really good on paper. But considering they gave the Arachnorok spiders a health buff, they're up to a th uh, 10,000 HP now. Like, yeah, you get an extra 6,000 HP, extra armor, and, you know, the uh, ranged attack ability. But I honestly think this thing, not only does it have the summon, Strider as well means on even maps with Forest, it'll still function just fine. And actually would be potentially even better if you can hide it. Not necessarily hide, right? Because you can't actually hide. But use the Forest to block shots, you know, enemy projectiles that are trying to shoot it or whatever. So... Just the, uh, the Ragnarok Queen is going to be so much more competitive, I think. And you really don't want to go, as things are currently implemented, more than a few heavy monsters, I think. I mean, I do still think like something like Double Giant or Ragnarok Queen could be kind of viable. Um, but in general, I would say you're, it, you're incentivized to go very, very wide. And the Pump Wagons are a big part of that. <clears throat> 450 points. I don't know if these guys will stay at this price. I think it's actually way too cheap. But 50 charge bonus. Good armor-piercing, uh, anti-infantry weapon damage. Not the most in the world for a chariot, but, I mean, like, you compare them to, uh... Oh, what are they at? <clears throat> Where are they at? Uh, boar chariots over here? I mean, boar chariots have similar weapon strength, right? So, just a lot more charge. And these guys are less than half the points. 
So, very, very good stuff, honestly. Snotling Pump Wagons are the winners of this DLC. Likewise, I do think the Swamp things are going to be pretty good. The other two variants of Trolls, I don't know if you'll see a lot of use for them in multiplayer, but certainly the Swamp things being, uh, you know, that they cause terror, that also makes them immune to psychology, and innately that means they're going to be a little bit better than most other Trolls. So, I think the big winners of this DLC, absolutely, I mean, besides the characters, all of the character focus changes are awesome, and I definitely am a big fan of... The Giant River Troll Hag, likewise, for the High Elves. I mean, all their character stuff is great, too. But really, I think the biggest winners are the Snotlings, and that is not something that I expected, but certainly I am happy about it. I don't know if happy. I, we'll see. We'll see how many people are end up getting super salty about this as the patch rolls on, because these guys are super cheap. I honestly think they should be probably 550 points um, rather than 450, but that's a topic for another day. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button so every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.